Hi, this is John Reynolds, Solomon Colors and Brickform, here today to talk to you about our Brickform Artesian Water Based Stain. This is a stain that has organic carriers and pigment. It's a non film forming type of product and it's non chemically reactive. We have 18 different colors and all the colors are stable indoors or outdoors. But before we get started, I want to go over three of the most common types of slabs that you'll want to stain. Okay? Here we have a stamped surface uh, that can be colored up really nicely with the artisan stain. We have your common broom finish and then we have a hard troweled surface here. One of the most important factors when you're using the Brickform Artesian water-based stain is surface preparation. Okay? So we've got this slab here uh, which is already fairly porous so we'll probably use our product called E-Etch on a surface like this. The broom finish is going to depend on how tight the broom is. It's always important to remember that you have to prepare the concrete for your sealer. So when we're looking at this slab and we're thinking about putting the artesian water-based stain down, we also have to be thinking about our sealer. So on these slabs we're going to end up putting our Gem Seal 400, which requires a CSP 1 or 2. If you've watched any of our surface preparation videos, you understand that the requirements that we have for our concrete surface preparation are very specific and they're designed to help you have a flaw-free product and a flaw-free installation and an installation that you don't get callbacks on. So when we look at doing an E-Etch here, that should probably open up this surface just fine for the artesian stain. The broom finish, we may have to do two applications of the E-Etch to make sure that we open it up and the tight tightly troweled surface, we may have to go a little more aggressive and maybe do a hydrochloric acid wash on it or even go as far as grinding the surface if it has been burnt with a power truck. These are the slabs that we're going to color today with our artesian water-based stain. Uh, earlier I sprayed a little bit of water on it about three or four minutes ago and you can see how tight these surfaces are. I sprayed water all the way back here and the water has, has soaked in and is starting to dissipate pretty quickly. So that means that the, the pores of the concrete are fairly open already. But because we still have a little bit of water sitting here, we want to make sure that we open that slab up, even though it is fairly porous to begin with. The same way with our broom finish, this slab, it's already starting to soak in the water and the water is starting to dissipate. On this slab, you can see that the water is sitting up on top. We have a lot of moisture sitting up on top, which says that that tight troweled surface is keeping things up on top. This slab we're going to need to pay attention to more so than these for opening up the pores to make sure that we get proper penetration with our water-based stain. Okay, on this slab we've determined that the absorption rate is pretty good. So that tells us that the pores are open, but we want to open up a, a little bit more with our E-Edge product. So we're going to do a single application of our E-Edge over this, and then we'll uh, pressure wash it and get it real clean. On our broom finish surface, it's a little bit tighter. So I'll go over it with two applications of E-Edge just to make sure that those pores are open. On this slab, we've determined that it's fairly tightly troweled, so we're going to do an application with a one part acid, hydrochloric acid, to five parts water. So it's a fairly strong acid solution and it should be able to open up the surface. If you have any questions on this surface preparation, always refer to our concrete surface preparation videos that you can see on our website. So we've got our slabs all cleaned off here. Now we're going to use our Brickform Artesian water-based stain. Since it's a small job, I'm just using small pump-up sprayers. Um, I've got one filled up with water, one filled up with our aged walnut, and another one filled up with a highlight color called Cajun Red. So I'm going to take these bottles and it's real important that you shake the heck out of them. And oftentimes it's good if you've got a fresh bottle to empty it out about halfway, shake it up to make sure that any pigment that settles down on the bottom gets resuspended, add the material back into it, reshake it, and make sure that you get a nice even coloration throughout the uh, jug. The other thing is, if you've got jugs from different lot numbers, make sure that you add them together so that you end up with an even coloration over your entire slab. Now in this container, I took the Cajun Red 
and filled it up halfway. Because I don't want this color as strong, I'm going to dilute it one to one with water. Now you can dilute this as much as you want with regular household water and uh, reduce the color value. I didn't want the, a super strong red highlight color over the top of my aged, brown, or aged walnut, so I diluted this one to one with water right there in the sprayer. And uh, so now I'm ready to start applying the product. Okay, so here we go. You can see that the slabs that we pressure washed and, and profiled are still a little bit damp. With the water-based stain, that's okay because what we want to do is it actually helps break the surface tension and you're less likely to get little spots that flash dry in the sun and the wind. So that's another reason that I carry water around is that I just like to slightly dampen the surface prior to applying the water-based stain. Now you don't want to over apply this material. Too much material will sit up on the surface and it will cause your sealer to delaminate. You want to apply at a rate of about 200 square feet per gallon, 300 to 400 if you want a lighter coat uh, with lighter tinting, um, and you don't really want to apply more than 200 square feet per gallon. Uh, one to two coats is about all you need. Uh, on a super porous surface, you may need additional coats. On a very tightly troweled surface, like what we're going to do over here, you don't want any more than, uh, than a coat or two, simply because we don't want pigment building up on the surface. So while this slab is still wet from the first layer of stain, I'm going to go in and I'm going to highlight it. A little bit of red color. This red will just be a little accent color over the top of the aged walnut, giving it a little more character. I like to highlight wet over wet. It gives it a nice natural aging effect. Now it's important to try to avoid heavy ponding like this. What happens is a couple things. The, the first is that you can see the pigments can separate. This is our, wall, our aged walnut and it's actually turning a green and a red. That's because the pigments will settle out. This nice even coat here is not going to, you're not going to have trouble here. But in here, this can actually settle out and you want to try to avoid that. So a lot of times on a stamped concrete surface like this, it's good to have a sponge, a wet sponge, to just dob these areas out so that you don't end up with a heavy ponding of water or a water-based stain that will actually distort your color. If you're on a bigger slab, you can actually get a roller and roll those out and then take your water and just mist your water over it and that helps dissipate everything, helps get everything even again. The other thing that that ponding material will do is it will actually deposit pigment at the surface level and that can cause your sealer to delaminate. So it's important to have a nice even coloration of the surface without a lot of ponding of the product. Okay, now as you can see, our artesian water-based stain is starting to dry out really nicely. We've got some nice coloration in here. When we put our solvent-based sealer on it, it's really going to draw out the color quite a bit. Um, I think what I'm going to do is add one more color, this tiger eye. I'm just going to mist it on just to kind of uh, add a third color and make it look even better at this point. Now, one of the nice things about this water-based stain is that I can add other colors without having to go through a washing process, a neutralizing process, and a rinsing process. Water-based stain is a non-reactive stain. So therefore, I can put it on, and once it's dry, fully dry, it's ready for sealer. Now, when drying, you've got to consider your weather conditions or your conditions, like if you're doing a basement floor or something like that. It's important to give this ample time to dry, or else you can run into sealer problems, such as blushing or clouding or delamination if there's too much moisture left in the slab. So give yourself plenty of time to dry. Out in the sun, it may be as little as three or four hours. Inside in the basement, it may be as much as 24 hours. Get your fans going, 
get stuff going to help you dry out uh, and give yourself plenty of time for this product to dry before you seal it. Any of the sealers that we have are compatible with this product. You can use our gem seal, our poly seal, satin seal, um, safety seal. Any one of our sealers will go right over the top of this and give you a beautiful finish.